So hi, today I'm going to put the wing and the stinger of a small parasitic wasp under the microscope. You think it sounds crazy? Well, stay tuned. I think it's going to be quite fun. Well, it's a long story. Um, I got to start last year, actually. Um, last year, we caught 70 caterpillars. We found them, we took them home, and we waited until they developed uh, into butterflies. Um, so what we could actually see is we could see that they actually formed the pupa, and then we had to wait for a few weeks, and then emerged beautiful butterflies, and then we could actually release them, and we were all happy, and then we said, we're going to do the same thing this year. Um, it wasn't that easy, um, as a matter of fact, because we only found one single caterpillar okay after hours of searching um, in the forest and uh, with uh, so many plants we, we turned the leaves around and looked for caterpillars we found one we were so happy took it home the kids loved it we put uh, the the plant material into the cage okay and two days later it was dead okay big disaster big drama kids were crying for two hours uh, and my wife was horribly disgusted because she found out the reason why it died because a parasitic wasp um, laid eggs into the caterpillar and the larvae of the wasp ate up the caterpillar killed it and that's kind of the story and this is basically where I said is that is a cool thing because now I have parasitic wasps that I can actually put under the microscope um, and uh, that's essentially what I did. So now let's have a slightly closer look here. The white fluffy stuff that you see there, uh, these are the cocoons of uh, the, the wasp and the black shrivel up structure that is the dead caterpillar. Um, the cocoons uh, in them you have metamorphosis happening. This means that the larvae they develop into adult wasps. And of course, I wanted to uh, monitor this process, so I conserved the leaf with the cocoons, put it into a glass jar, lid on top, of course, and then I waited for uh, some time because I wanted to wait until the wasps emerge. And after around two weeks, this is what I found. Overnight, uh, about 30 of these wasps came out. Um, I was quite happy and plenty of uh, micros microscopy specimens now to observe. Um, after a few days, they died. However, that is a normal thing uh, for, ha for them uh, to happen. Um, and then, of course, it was easy for me to observe them under the microscope. The children, however, were very, very, very sad that the um, caterpillar passed away. So they even co uh, constructed a, a wooden coffin and they wanted to bury that uh, in the forest. Here, let's have a closer look now of uh, what was left over. The caterpillar still there um, and the cocoons now they have a little uh, round opening on one side. Now the wasps emerged out of this round uh, hole um, after the, the metamorphosis process uh, has finished. Uh, so I was looking around and pretty much uh, all of the cocoons that I found had this uh, small opening. Well, of course, the first obvious thing is, is you want to look at those insects under the stereo microscope. So this is what I did. And uh, this is my setup. I put a camera in front of the micros microscope eyepiece. Um, the wasps are placed uh, on the stage like this. And uh, I then had a closer look uh, at uh, 20 and 40 times. And I discovered that there are seem to be two different types of wasps. Like for example, this one here has a stinger um, on the bottom. You can see quite a large uh, structure emerging from the abdomen and other wasps did not. Uh, so maybe this is one way of distinguishing males from females. And another thing that I noticed is that uh, there are many um, body parts, uh, appendages were broken off because the wasps are quite fragile. They are completely dry now after several days of drying in the jar. And this makes them rather difficult to handle and to manipulate. Um, as soon as you touch them, some parts uh, like to break off very easily. I'm now using my tweezers uh, on the right side to point to one of those stingers. Um, so you can see that it's uh, relatively large. This one over here is lying on its back and you can also see the stinger now um, exposed. It is uh, quite a long structure compared uh, to the overall insect. And uh, yet another one here, this stinger is more exposed and you can see that it's really uh, quite pointed and sharp and also slightly bent and round. And uh, a last one is uh, over here, also easily visible because uh, it's so well exposed. The antenna of these wasps are also quite large. Um, they are quite uh, 
remarkably large. And these are so-called entomological needles um, because the wasps were so, were so difficult to manipulate and to handle. I decided to pin one of them up uh, like this uh, so it's easier for me to clip off the wings because I wanted to make a permanent mount of the wings and uh, they were so difficult uh, to manipulate because of their small size that it's much, much easier like this. I'm now using small scissors to clip off the wings and the wasp being... Um, Hymenoptera, that is the category that the taxonomic category that they belong to, they have two pairs of wings which are both very thin and membranous. And for mounting, my favorite mounting medium is Eupural mounting medium, and it is very commonly used uh, for mounting insects and other arthropods, especially uh, when the insects are very dry. Uh, the mounting medium is, is quite uh, able to preserve them quite well. So, my first attempt uh, a drop of a mounting medium goes on the slide. And into the mounting medium, I directly placed uh, the wings of the insect. Uh, I dipped my tweezers into a little bit of mounting medium so that they are sticky. And this uh, makes it much easier for me to transfer the wings because they easily stick uh, to the tip uh, of the tweezers. Um, sometimes they stick a little bit too well and they have a problem coming off, uh, but generally it worked quite well. On top, uh, of course, goes a cover glass and this is now the embarrassing part of the whole undertaking because I used way too much mounting medium and it really did not look very nice. The mounting medium spilled out and not a very nice thing. Never put too much mounting medium um, on the slide. Sometimes less is more. Uh, too much mounting medium means you have to wait way too long for it to dry and it also doesn't look very nice. Let's try everything again with a little bit less mounting medium and again the wings as I said sometimes they don't want to get off and on top again a cover glass and now we see that the wing is embedded in a very thin film of mounting medium makes everything dry much faster. Everything goes under the microscope of course and let's have a look at low magnification. Wasps belong to the Hymenoptera, so this means they have two pairs of thin but fully developed wings and we're going to be looking at uh, both uh, the front wing and the back wing. Using the four times magnifying objective, the first thing I realized, a lot of hair on the wing. Um, both top and bottom of the wing have many many uh, little hair. And the second thing that you realize on the right side, there's a large black spot. This is called the stigma of the wing. And it's also important for identifying the insect. Um, also visible, a large number of veins um, in the wing and they give the wing a lot of strength um, and stability. At a slightly higher magnification, um, we can also see that they are here on the top and on the bottom side of the wing. And we know that because not both of them can be in focus at the same time. So there seems to be a little dis distance between them, of course, because top and bottom side are separated by the thickness um, of the wing itself. And we can also see that the veins also are much darker in color, but they change color the further you go away from the root of the wing. This is the leading edge of the wing and the hair are quite dense here. This is now the back wing, uh, which is a little bit smaller. Um, it does not have such a pronounced stigma. As a matter of fact, I don't see one at all. And it is like this also that here we have plenty of hair also on the edges of the wing. Quite certainly important for aerodynamics. And yet at a higher magnification. So, and uh, I also decided, well, let's compare those entomological needles. Okay, let's uh, compare these uh, entomological needles with the stinger of the wasp. Let's see which one's sharper. This is now part of the abdomen that I also mounted. Uh, and we can see that the stinger is actually made of two parts. There is the main stinger. I don't know how it is really called. We call it the main stinger, but the, the very sharp structure and it's covered uh, by a larger, darker structure with uh, many little hair on it. I think that maybe this uh, could be the organ responsible for depositing the eggs. I don't know, um, but evidently both of them need to work together for uh, putting eggs into the caterpillar. 
and uh, the exoskeleton of the insect is quite dark uh, so unfortunately I do not see many more details it's just a large black uh, shadowy structure that we see chemical treatment uh, could brighten up the exoskeleton quite a bit what is this? Well, that is the needle now. At the same magnification, we can see that it is significantly thicker than the stinger. Um, it is made of metal, therefore equally intransparent to light. And we can also see that it is by far not as sharp and pointed as one of those stingers of the wasp. Quite remarkable, I would say. And here this again at the same magnification, a, the stinger itself that we just looked at before in com for comparison. Okay, this was the little parasitic wasp project. Uh, hope you liked it. At least I uh, hope it was interesting. I don't know if it's really a topic that you can really like, thinking about the fact that a, a wasp puts eggs into a caterpillar and then kills the caterpillar this way. Um, it's not a thing that uh, is very appetizing, I admit, but that's the way nature is. Um, in any case, I wish you a nice day. Happy microbe hunting. Um, and uh, like and subscribe to the video. And also, if you are interested in microscopy, uh, you can also visit uh, my shop. I collected a whole bunch of affiliate links. Uh, so uh, you have uh, basically a, quite a large selection of uh, microscopy accessories. I wish you a nice day. Bye-bye. All the best and see you next time. <laughs>